Hey guys, uh, before I start my little hodgepodge video of dropping hints of figures I got and things like that from Joe Fest, uh, just something to kill the time until I can get the reviews done and written out. Uh, I just wanted to take a, a second here. I will be doing a video completely about Delta 17, the comic, uh, which I had autographed at Joe Fest by uh, Stephen Platt and Ken Poe, and that was a really great time. Man, talk about pulling me into the comic. Um... And I will do a video about Leonidas, the character I bought uh, out of De Delta 17. And I am going to order the rest of that core group, and I will probably order the comics uh, 2, 3, and on. Just because I'm in, boys. I'm in. I'm in. I have a theory about Delta 17, and I know Aaron the Toy Enhancer agrees, and I just I see that... You know, Punk with Toys probably said it before I was thinking it, because he was long exposed to this. But um, we are in 1982 again, gentlemen. We are 19, 1982 again. You just need to look for your breaker and your snake toys and your stalker in a different form. But uh, it's happening again. And we're back. We're the first ones at the shelves again. Isn't that a wonderful experience? But I, I'm going to do a serious little moment here to talk to you about why I bought Leonidas. Okay. Um, Ken and the team, they when they met me, they uh, they met me a few times here at Joe Fest because we had uh, I was I was there with the group, right? Lots lots of people they met me through Aaron the Toy Enhancer. They saw me with Dale and Seventy Seven and uh, Pop Blender. They see me with Punk. They see me with a few guys, right? Uh, and so when I went to their booth, they were uh, you want an autograph copy of that comic? And I was like, absolutely, thank you very much. Uh, and I spent a few visits going back and forth for the Delta 17 booth because I couldn't figure out why I was continually drawn there. All right. Lots of military toys at Joe Fest, clearly. It starts with an emblem. Okay. Um, I had to draw an emblem very close to this, and I'm hoping to find that very close uh, soon, or somewhere in my sketches as I get ready for my move, uh, and I'm going through things I've packed. 2007 C Squadron of the LDSH. Uh, we are a Panzer Squadron. That is my second tour. Yes, I'm the Sergeant Major's gunner in my lab, but we are a tank squadron, and we are comprised of three different regiments at this time. We are the Lord Strathbone of Horus. Uh, we are the, uh, the Van Luz, and uh, we are the Royal Canadian Dragoons. Three different units combined into one tank unit, one tank squadron, C Squadron. Our logo was a leopard skull. A leopard skull. Much like this one. All right, that's uh, some sort of feline skull. I would have presumed either a cheetah or a tiger or, I feel, panther or leopard. But I had to get very familiar with drawing leopard skulls for quite a while for our Roto to come up with logos for you guys' t-shirts and whatnot. So that I knew was drawing me in right away. I was like, I recognize a leopard skull. Um... Now, whether it's a leopard or not, it does not the point. Suddenly, I was, like, connecting with Delta 17 just for the logo. Never mind the fact that I found out later that Ken Poe was from Canada. Um, and never mind, after reading the comic, I realized that Stephen Plot probably has some level of military experience I wasn't uh, wasn't tracking or aware of. But, uh, or if not, he's got some people in his, in his arm's reach with some level of military experience, I would think. And if... And if that isn't the case, well, then I guess he's picking up some good points from military-style writing somewhere else, right? Delta 17 reminds me of a book I grew up with called Phoenix Force. It was from the same guy that wrote the book Mac Bolin and things like this. And these were dime store, laundry mat, candy novels that uh, you could liken to the show The Unit. Just quick little uh, novelellas that you would read about missions that these... Phoenix Force would go on, and that was basically a literary version of a G.I. Joe, right? Like, in literature, before, you know, anybody realized an adult might want to read about G.I. Joe. Delta 17 reminded me very much of that, and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, I am uh, into this unit, and they're different from G.I. Joe, like Phoenix Force was. The hook on Phoenix Force was they used to have, if you get into the back cover, and this is when my friend and I collected them all, uh, if you went to the back cover, they would have a weapons bio and description and diagram with all the information on a certain weapon that made its way into the book on one of the characters used, be it a Spass 12, Desert Eagle, uh, Colt 44, 50 caliber Browning. These things made their way in their books. There was this little hook to keep it going, going, these are collectible. I like these series, things like that. 
Military toy lines have a lot of resources to do that with and make them look collectible, add little things. They've got a wealth of artistic design just waiting to be accessed. You don't have to know how to create military looking things if you've got a Google and you can look online and see the military things. And it's a very big resource, right? So you could, when you're doing up a unit of soldiers, you can pick them from anywhere. You can pick them from the America, uh, the America, the United States, clearly, right? Lots of military there, big old military, you know, superpower military, superpower military. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's true. The American might is the thing of repute for the nation and its military budget, right? Uh, you can pick from the Russian military, although it doesn't seem like anybody really wants to pick from anywhere around the Russia-Ukraine subject uh, to make characters out of them. And yet you will in a comic line at some point, so why dance around it? Um, just because of current political tensions didn't take, take anything away from the characters of the October Guard or uh, the Red Room from the Black Widow series, right? Like, Russia is Russia. Um we haven't always seen eye to eye with Russia on a many issues. So whatever's going on there, uh, if that's what's keeping the October Guard at bay for G.I. Joe and classified and whatnot, it's not something a company like Delta 7 or a uh, story like a comic line like Delta 17 seems to be afraid to tackle. Delta 17, again, reminds me of the G.I. Joe early stages in that while they're tackling a military line, they're keeping it oriented with so that any reader can pick it up. Right? There's not swearing in this. You're not going to see gratuitous nudity or blood splatter or things like this. It's not that book. Uh, again, reminding me very much to G.I. Joe because it's got a synonymous toy line. What drew me in was Leonidas, his appearance, his file card, and the point that struck home that I was already feeling about this guy. I've met, I know this guy. I wouldn't say I've met this guy, but this guy was all too familiar to me. Somehow, some way, I knew who this was meant to be. Um, I haven't asked them as much. Maybe if they see this video or one of them does or somebody can send them this part of the video. I'm wondering if this is meant to represent Master Corporal Aaron Doyle of the two PPCLI in Canada who died on the roto that relieved my own in 2008. Uh, it was just uh, unfortunate circumstances. He came under mortar fire. I'm showing you some clips right now of the guy. I never had the honor of meeting this man. I wish I had. Uh, he was clearly well, uh, well, I mean, he was clearly revered by 2VP, and by 1VP, and by 3VP, and by the RCR, and by every soldier that ever set foot uh, with Canadian boots on into that country. Um, losing Master Corporal Doyle was hard for a lot of them. Uh, and I'm hoping I'm remembering the name right, and I'll look at the clip, and then I'll have to edit this whole thing. Because like I said, I never met the guy, but I heard so much about him. I heard about as much as him as the guys that I did know that we lost on the tour. And it was all the same sentiment. Nicest guy in the world. You know, nicest guy in the world. Don't F with him. You know, like it was true. Uh, that was the sentiment about Buddy, right? Uh, big old teddy bear. Big old animal lover. Big old animal lover. Uh, and, uh... Nicest guy in the world, but you would not want to meet this guy in the fight. You want to know the difference between an army guy that in a fight and a guy who's just like trying to pick a fight or a UFC fighter. It's, it, it's really the one thing that everybody kind of forgets. When we're taught to fight, we're not taught to hurt you uh, as much as we are I'm taught to keep ourselves alive. So that means kill, right? Like that, 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 I, I'm not that guy. I've never been that guy. But that was always the intent of when we were trained to fight. Yeah, you could go take jujitsu on the side or karate or uh, karate maga. I don't care. You could take all of it. But the bottom line is in CQC and CQCI, so close quarters combat, close quarters combat instructor, you're winning that fight. And if Buddy won't back down, you're going to put him down. And it's not going to be before a referee and it's not going to be a count to three. It's going to be his last breaths or yours. Right? So when we say you don't F with the guy, you don't have with the guy. And so what does that usually look like sometimes? Sometimes people will hear that about a soldier somewhere uh, and decide maybe I've got something to prove. So they'll have with the guy, right? And I'm sorry, the guy's got a problem on his hands. He, uh, you know, the, 
he's probably been trained to fight a variety of ways and he probably will hold it back but the biggest thing in his way right now is he's got to rule out some of those natural strikes that are going to <laughs> those are the ones that are gonna that are gonna ruin your day right so i mean guys like leonidas are clearly people that have the skill to do the darkest of things and they always have the gentlest of souls i find and so they write leonidas very likable guy, very fun loving, you know, the, the action hero with the, uh, with, you know, you could easily see somebody like, um, oh God, what's he, uh, <laughs> as soon as I, as soon as I start thinking of it, he played Star Lord and got Guardians of the Galaxy and all that. I'll think of the guy's name and plop it up or something. But you could see some of the modern actors with the wit, but the build. And the and you know gun handling taught like John Wick or whatever you could see certain actors playing a guy like Leonidas and doing really well at it. Um, but uh, Aaron Doyle was one of a kind, very recognizable loss for Canada, and uh, Master Corporal Doyle was a very revered soldier. And I was not infantry; I was armored, right? Um, but even I recognized this guy. I could be imagining all of it. I probably am. I probably am. This is not a unique look when you think about an overseas operator in recent years, right? And they did kind of characterize him with a lot of civilian dress mixed with military kit, which a lot of operators would do, especially the private contractors that they, they denote like these guys would kind of be, right? Um, doesn't change the thing. I still feel it. I feel like that's Master Corporal Doyle sitting right there. And I thought of it before, and you're going to, and I'm going to tell you right now. I bought a bunch of Alivers when I was at Joe Vest, okay? And one of them I got, I got because that also gave me the vibe. Now, I know Bobby Valla didn't design this guy, uh, thinking of Mass Corporal Doyle. I'm not convinced that wasn't the case here. And I'm not convinced Patriot Force uh, uh, won't ever look at Mass Corporal Doyle as worthy of his own figure for their line. Canada has a lot of great heroes, guys. You can you can joke around and say that we're the weird, you know, snow Eskimos or uh, northern Mexicans that joke about our politeness and all that other stuff. But read your history books and war. Don't fuck with us ever, ever. We own the night. All right. And uh, it's guys like that. So when I saw Trigger for Valivers, um, I thought of them as well. But I'm going to solve this before it ever comes out. If anybody ever says that they took Leonidas and ripped off Trigger from Bolivar's, come talk to me. <laughs> um, I'll sort you out real nice. I'll, I'll do it my civil Canadian way. So that doesn't work. And then maybe I'll put a mask on and, and sort you out differently. <laughs> oh, that's going to have some relevance later, guys. One year in. Changes on the wind. All right. But uh, I did want to do a little shed a light to say thank you delta 17 whether this was intentional or not my world needed a leonidas it did my heart good to remember these guys fondly and to have a representation like this on my shelf i hope these pictures that i'm sharing are okay with any internet uh, copyright hunters but you know what i'm told i get three stakes at copynet so today <laughs> copynet copyrights so today just to talk about leonidas if it costs me a strike so be it I'm not monetized, so I'm not worried about the rest of it right now. Uh, but if you liked this, you know, um, I'd say hit like, but that would be for me. Uh, and I won't manipulate this to say like, uh, if you like this dude, all I will say is if you liked my videos, uh, please consider watching more and getting to know us around here at in Crow Country, as I like to call it now. Come on into Crow Country. I'll introduce you to a bunch of guys like this anytime you ask, okay? And, uh... Ken, Steve, Retro J, Delta 17 crew. Thank you very much.